What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ben and today we are taking a look at the iPad Air 5. This thing is an absolute monster when it comes to content creation. Whether you do photo, video, or both, I think this thing could be seriously helpful for a lot of people out there. Personally, my reason for buying it was I don't have a laptop, so if I'm editing on the go, whether I'm on vacation or I just wanna sit on the couch and edit some photos, I have no way to do that. All of my editing was done on my PC back here. So I bit the bullet, I decided I wanna go with an iPad and I chose this one and I would not turn back. I don't know if this thing is slept on or if I just slept on it, but I am so surprised that I went this long without one. So there's tons of reviews on this iPad out there, but when I was looking across videos, trying to figure out if this was the right purchase for me or not, I didn't see many for content creators. So I wanted to share with you guys my thoughts on this thing as a creator. So if you are looking to buy one and that's what your primary purpose for this is, you'll be able to get a good idea of what this is capable. So I'm gonna break the video down into three sections. I'm gonna go over the specs very briefly because as I said, there's tons of videos out there describing this iPad in particular. Secondly, I'm gonna go over how I use this device for photo and how powerful it's been for that. And third, I'm gonna go over video and that's when this thing really shows how powerful it is. I really think it's capable of being able to edit full-length YouTube videos on here. Spoiler alert, I will be putting that to the test this week, but more on that at the end of the video. So let's talk specs real quick. You can get either 64 or 256 gigabytes of storage. I know a lot of people complain that the base model is 64, but to be honest, I'm doing a lot of editing off of an external hard drive, so I don't need that storage space for photo or video, and I don't see myself downloading any games on this, so 64 for me works just fine. The screen is a 10.9 inch liquid retina display that gets up to 500 nits of brightness, so if you are doing photo or video editing on here, it's gonna look really nice. If you're outside, you might have a bit of an issue. Now, what really makes this iPad special is it has an M1 chip with an 8 core CPU and GPU and 8 gigabytes of RAM. So I mean this thing is going to blow a lot of laptops and tablets out of the water when it comes to processing and rendering videos and photos, things of that nature. Downloading apps on this thing the other day was an absolute joke. It was like as soon as I hit download in the app store, the app was on my device with the flip of a switch. The fact that there's an M1 chip in this thing and it's an iPad, it's blows my mind. And lastly, this does have Touch ID, but not facial recognition, which I don't know why they couldn't put facial recognition on there. I'm sure there's a reason behind it, but it is kind of annoying going from an iPhone 12 where I have Face ID to this. So mainly I just type in my passcode, which it is what it is. It's not a deal breaker, you know? Now I want to talk about operating systems real quick. I'm filming this in September. So iPad OS 16 has not officially dropped yet, but the beta has been out for quite a few months now. The fact that there's an M1 chip in this does give it some advantages over the former model that do not have M1 chips. I haven't updated this to the iPad OS 16 beta yet, so I can't speak to how impactful those features are gonna be. I will be grabbing the beta very soon and doing some tests on it, so stay tuned. I'm probably gonna do a video on that before it officially drops. But for now, I just want to see how this thing runs straight out of the box and talk to you guys about it, just like you'd be using it if you bought it today. So editing photos on the M1 iPad Air so far has been an absolute breeze. I've been using the Apple Pencil 2 and it's really cool to be able to edit the photos with a pencil rather than keyboard and mouse. I wouldn't go as far as saying it's quicker doing it this way than on a computer, but it's definitely quicker than using your finger. I really like the Apple Pencil 2 paired with this M1 iPad Air because it charges Super easy, it snaps right on top, very convenient. So if you are looking to pick up this iPad for photo or video editing, I would consider the Apple Pencil 2 into your budget. As far as Photoshop and Lightroom run on here, I haven't come across any issues yet. I'll make sure to let you guys know in the next video if I do come across any, but so far it's been very smooth. Transferring files on this has actually been much easier than on my computer. With the computer, what I would have to do is take the SD card from my camera, plug it into an SD card reader, transfer the files over to my computer into Lightroom, and then from Lightroom to Google Drive, from Google Drive to my phone. That's a lot. With the iPad, all I have to do is plug in my USB-C card reader with the videos and photos from my camera, which I'm not sure if I mentioned in the specs, this does have a USB type C port on it. So that's super helpful. No more annoying lightning connectors for this thing. Hopefully this year with the iPad 10, we'll see every iPad go over to USB-C. Personally, mostly what I use is Lightroom. I haven't used Photoshop much, but what I have used, it seems to be integrated into the iPad nicely. The layout obviously is a little different than it is on the computer. So it works better with this operating system. But I actually like it. 
I feel like they made it really streamlined for editing on here. As far as screen brightness and color accuracy go, like I said earlier, it's 500 nits, so it's not the brightest screen you can get out there, but I have done some editing outside and I haven't found any issues really. I did throw on a cheap screen protector from Amazon that has that paper feel. I think it's actually called paper feel. It's not the paper like one. This one was only $10 for a pack of two, whereas the paper light I think is 20. And if you're worried about color accuracy, it seems to be pretty accurate with colors so far. One thing that I do like about editing on here is it looks how it's gonna look if you're posting on social media. So if you're like me and a lot of the photo work you do does go on social media, what it looks like on the iPad is what it's gonna look like on Instagram. I've run into this problem once before when I didn't have my monitor properly calibrated. All the photos that I were editing looked different on my computer versus my phone. With this, you don't have to worry about that. So that's really nice. One tip I do have for this is make sure to turn true tone and night shift off when you're editing photos. True tone adjusts the screen color and brightness to the environment that you're in, depending on the lighting. So obviously if you're editing photos in true tone and you're in a darker environment with say a warmer light, the screen is gonna look a little bit different than if, if you were outside. And night shift that's been around on the iPhones for a while now, what that will do is make your screen a little bit warmer and dimmer. So it's better for your eyes at night, less blue light. So make sure to shut that off as well. And I think that's everything we're regarding photo on here. Like I said, I really enjoy it. It feels nice using the Apple Pencil to slide around those Lightroom sliders. And it's actually sped up my workflow because I don't have to spend so much time transferring files around. With that being said, let's move into what I'm most surprised about with this iPad, which is video editing. So video. Editing video on this is actually what prompted me to make this video in the first place. I didn't see a whole lot of people out there talking about video editing on this thing, and if I did, they just said that it was possible and it worked well. But let me tell you, this thing is a powerhouse for editing videos. The program I've been using is called LumaFusion, and it's basically an entire video editor made just for your iPad. I haven't used it a bunch yet, but I can tell that I'm gonna be using this to edit videos a lot. This really powerful iPad combined with that really powerful app can make this essentially your full-time editing computer. Now, if you are Already have a computer I'm not saying that it's gonna replace a PC but I bet that you could do quite a bit of content creation on this thing so I figured the best way to test this theory is see if I could create an entire YouTube video all just on the iPad Air 5 the day that this comes out I'm leaving for vacation so it's the perfect opportunity for me to bring this thing with me bring my camera and try and create a YouTube video I'm gonna record how everything goes with LumaFusion any troubles that I've had any successes that I've had so I'll be coming back from vacation in seven days from when this video is posted gonna give myself a little bit of extra time to edit when I get back. Still on here though, I should have a YouTube video posted that was edited entirely on the iPad Air 5. I figure if I can do it, that'll be a testament to whether or not this is really a full-time content creation machine. And I will say I do like editing on here. It's fun. It's a little bit different from keyboard and mouse. You know, just like with photo editing, I wouldn't go as far as saying that it's faster on here, but it's definitely different to be able to move things around and scrub through the timeline with a little pencil. Just like with anything, there are some downsides with this too. Like I mentioned, this is only 64 gigabytes, so I imagine and then I'm gonna have to do a lot of editing off of my external hard drive. Another downside with this iPad for video editing compared to the iPad Pro is this is only 60 hertz, whereas that one is 120. I don't see this being a huge difference, especially for me, I have the iPhone 12, so I'm used to 60 hertz. But if that's something you think is really gonna bother you, then that's kind of a personal choice you have to make depending on your budget. And I think that'll wrap it up, guys. That's about everything that I've experienced with this so far. Like I said, I haven't had it for long, but what I have experienced, it's really blown my mind. I really think that this thing could replace place a laptop for sure and if you don't have any type of computer whatsoever could possibly be your main editing computer stay tuned to see how editing an entire youtube video on this thing goes i think that'll be the real test to see what it can handle and i think that if there are any major problems that's when i'll run into them and i'll make sure to document that for you guys but other than that that's the ipad air 5 m1 chip this thing is a powerhouse. I'm super excited to continue to use this. Thanks again for stopping by. You know I appreciate it a lot. Hit up my Instagram, at Chetty Studios, for updates on how this video is going this week. And I'll see you guys next time. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe. Peace.